I'd like to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Luke 10, 30 through 37 today as we read the uh, parable of the Good Samaritan. Just in way of context, Jesus was, uh, had just the 70 he sent out had just come back. Uh, this is at the beginning of Luke 10. He sends out 70 and they had just come back and he was speaking to the 70 and he turned and also spoke to his disciples. And a lawyer in the group stood up and asked what he should do to inherit eternal life. Jesus said, well, what, what is written? What, what is the law? And the lawyer responded, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Jesus said, you've answer, answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Join me starting in verse 30, which says, Jesus replied and said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance, a priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side, likewise a Levite also. When he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, keep in mind, a Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his own, his wounds, pouring oil on them and putting him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he, the lawyer, said, the one who showed mercy toward him. Then Jesus said to him, go and do the same. Who is my neighbor? Who is my neighbor? Who is your neighbor? That's the question. Who is my neighbor? There's speculation. If you look at this uh, conversation between Jesus and the lawyer, there's obviously some speculation. But just in understanding that this lawyer had the right mindset, had the right knowledge of what he was supposed to do. However, it's just weird to look and think, you know, to say, how, how can I love God with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength? That wasn't his question. How can I do that better? The lawyer kind of thought to himself, you know, I, I do that well enough. Who's my neighbor? Specify that. Keep in mind, though, there is absolutely no way to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and not also love your neighbor as yourself. Keep that in mind. But as we continue going on, the parable of the Good Samaritan, it's well known and it's familiar. I think sometimes that's the downfall of these things. They become familiar. However, and, and this is the downfall, because it would have been unthinkable for this event to have taken place from a Jewish perspective. Nobody in their right mind would have ever said, oh man, I sure hope a Samaritan shows up as the third guy. The Samaritans were looked at in this, in this day and age, in this culture, they were looked at as false Jews who did not worship Yahweh in the proper manner. They worshiped on uh, Mount Gerizim instead of Zion. They, they worshiped on the wrong mountain. The Jews... Uh, the Samaritans also despised the Jews because of the reject to their offer to help it with the rebuilding of the temple. We see that in Ezra 4 verse 3. There, there's just this animosity between these two people of the Jews and the half-breeds, the Jews and the Samaritans. Reading ancient, uh, ancient texts from this day, you see that you, couldn't trust, you could not trust the word of a Samaritan. You couldn't even you couldn't place any form of trust. You can't trust what they say. If they start saying something, don't say amen to what they're saying until they finish. Because they're a Samaritan. They were looked at as half-breeds, these less than people. But before even the Samaritan came, the, who should have been the hero of the story, both the priest and Levite, they would have been expected uh, because of their religious role and obligation, they would have been expected to help the man. However, you see, they passed by on the other side of the road. Whether it was one excuse or another of, I'm on my way to the temple, I cannot become unclean by touching this man. He might be dead already. 
he might even be a trap. You know, I, I, if I go to help him, he could turn and that could, you know, they could have painted fake blood on him. The, there were excuses, you know, is this a trap? Is I, I can't in, inconvenience myself because I have to, I have a place to be. I have my people that I need to help. Maybe the priest even knew that, oh, there was a Levite on the road behind me. He will be able to help. And the Levite comes up and says, ooh, I have a place to be. Man, if, if that priest didn't help him, maybe there's a reason why. There's, there's got to be a good reason that he, the priest didn't help him. If the priest didn't help him, I probably shouldn't either. It's probably what's best. Yet it was a half-breed Samaritan who came to the man's aid. Jesus' question, Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? Being a neighbor is not about race, religion, creed. It's not about anything. Your skin color, your, what walk of life you come from. To be a neighbor to somebody is to show compassion to them. So I have a question for you. Who then is our neighbor? Who then is our neighbor? How can I, how can you show mercy to them? That homeless guy you see every day, I'll bet you can think of a hundred excuses not to help them. But who is your neighbor? Are you a neighbor to him? regardless of if they are neighborly back? Who then is your neighbor? Your neighbor are those who are despised and outcast and looked down upon and seen as less than people. That's your neighbor. As a believer, that is your neighbor. Your job as a believer is to show compassion because of what Christ has done for us and what he can do for them. Would you bow your head with me? Dear Jesus, we thank you for this day, just this opportunity, God, to read your word. Lord, I, I pray that each and every one of us would learn what it means to be a neighbor and, God, what it means to look out for the needs and, and the, the well-being of our neighbors. God, I pray that you would show us how you're calling, uh, how you're calling us each and every day to bless those who who need compassion, who need your love in their life. And God, I, I pray that you would open our eyes to see the times you're calling us to be your hands and your feet. God, I pray for the Steely family. Mr. Steely is in need of salvation. God, I pray that he would open his eyes to see that he needs to make you the Lord and Savior of his life. God, for sisters who are saved but not ready to give up on this world and, and have a warped view of, of what it means for the rapture to come, what it means to be in your present, God, I pray that you, you would help with that heart change that needs to take place so that they would look forward to your coming. God, for family members, sisters who have rejected you and, and also rejected their family, God, I pray that you would restore those ties, those family ties. And God, I pray that you would help to restore them, uh, those individuals into fellowship with you. God, those who suffer with self-harm and suicidal thoughts, God, I pray that you would encourage them. God, help them to see who you are in their life. And Father, I pray that they would go and seek the help that is needed so that they can come back to a right state of mind to, to see the value of their life and that they don't have to harm themselves in those ways. And God, it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this was encouraging to you as it was encouraging to me. Go out, be a neighbor, show compassion, show the love of Jesus to someone. People aren't going to care how much you know. They're not going to care about that gospel tract you want to give them unless they know how much you care. They don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. Go, be a neighbor to someone. Be the hands and the feet of Jesus. 
Jesus didn't come and just proclaim salvation. Jesus worked in the lives of the individuals. He got to know them so that he could serve them. Get to know people. Get to know your neighbors. Guys, I will see y'all in the next one. Take care.